I'll begin my, my tool tip by saving my project in the uh, appropriate folder. Um, I'll first ensure that I'm in the team drive that I want to be in. Go to my home icon, and I'm going to put mine in tutorial folders. Um, this, will, this will vary depending on if you're doing this for a class or a personal project. So I'm going to save this. And I'll go ahead now and minimize the data panel. Uh, so I'll start um, by navigating to create and selecting the box tool. Um, I'm going to select the top plane, but it's not super critical which plane you select. And then I'm going to hover over the um, origin icon, left click, pull out, left click again. And I will input the, the base dimensions of our box in this dialog box. So 18 inches by 8 inches. And I'm going to go with 4.25, 4 and a quarter inch. I'll zoom out a bit. I'm now going to use the uh, shell tool in the modify toolbars. Let's come down to shell, select this top face, and I'm going to give it a value of our plywood thickness, which is 0.75. And now we have a shelled out box open, open on the top. Um, I'd like to put some partitions in this box and a handle. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use the sketch and then extrude tool. So I'm going to select this, the bottom of our box and create sketch. And then I'll come over to create a rectangle, standard two point rectangle or R on the keyboard. And I want to snap to the, the edge of the bottom of our box. So when I hover over and I get the X icon, I'll left click, I'll drag over to the other side until I get the X icon, left click again, and I'll do it two more times. I'm also gonna have a center partition here, so I'll hover over, X icon, drag it across, click again. And then to get out of the rectangle tool, I'll use escape on the keyboard. So now I want to dimension these and further define them. So I'm gonna use the dimension tool, which is in create, sketch dimension or D on the keyboard. And I'm gonna to start to dimension this out. So this will be the material thickness, 0.75, enter. And I can use that, I could use this first input value as my next dimension. So I'm gonna, instead of typing in 0.75, I'm gonna select this dimension and it, it drops in the D7 variable, which is what corresponds to this, this dimension. Enter. And I will do the same to the center partition. Enter. So now I'm going to give a dimension from the outside edge. Um, I'll make this three inches. And I'll go ahead and keep it symmetrical. So I'll select this three inches, which is the variable D10. And I would like this uh, internal uh, center partition to actually be on center. So I'm going to use the line tool uh, or L on the keyboard. I'm going to hover over uh, our sketch here until I find the X with the triangle icon, which is the center point. I'm going to drag it across and drop it to the other triangle. So if I accidentally drop it, by left clicking before I snap to it, I'm going to use escape. I can use the, the um, constraints toolbar to relocate it. So I'm going to select this midpoint constraint, uh, select the endpoint, and then select the line I want it to snap to. Um, the other thing I'd like to do to this line is, is, is designate it as a construction line. So I'm going to select the line, and then in the sketch palette line type, uh, I'm going to select construction and that'll make it a dotted line, which indicates it's for reference only. Um, so I still need to define where this, where this line goes. So I'm going to use D on the keyboard and give this dimension from, from the center point line. 
And this dimension will be our material thickness uh, divided by two, or 0.375. So now I can rotate this around using the rotate cube, the view cube. And I can see that I have uh, sketches within, two dimensional sketches within our, our hollow box here that will now extrude up. So I'm gonna close out my sketch and come to create, extrude. And I'm gonna select these two outside partitions, uh, drag them up. And by default, the operation will be join and that'll be fine for this project. So I'll drag these up, I can also input a value and I'm gonna go ahead and use the 7.5 inch value. This can always be changed later. It's like, okay. Um, so if you'll notice the, the sketch has, has gone away. Um, it's, it's hidden over here in the design tree. So I'm going to use this um, arrow icon, select it and it brings down all of my sketches. And I'm gonna show this hidden sketch. And I'm gonna use it again to extrude the center partition. So we'll use E on the keyboard for extrude. I'm gonna select the center partition area. I'll use the arrow to pull this up to a point that I like, or I can give it a value, 6.5. Um, okay. So I'm done with that particular sketch. I'm gonna go ahead and hide it and minimize that. Um, so now I want to, I want to give these edges a, an angular shape with a rounded top. So I'm going to use the modify move command or M on the keyboard. And generally by default, the bodies is selected. Um, so I'm not going to be moving a body. I'm going to be moving a face. So I want to come down and select face. And then I'll hover over the edge of the face that I want to rotate until I find the, the point of rotation. So down here, I want it to pivot at this bottom point. And I can select anything that's within the same plane. And I can then use this rotation toggle to rotate it around. And I like 30 degrees. So I'm going to say OK. And I'll do the same on the other side. So M on the keyboard, find my rotation point. And if you accidentally snap on the wrong face, you can use control select to deselect it, or you can deselect your selections here and then come back and reselect. So we'll use this rotation toggle, minus 30, okay. And now I'll use in modify, uh, drop down the press pull tool or key Q on the key, keyboard. And I will select these four faces here and use again the arrow to drop these down. I'm going to try in 1.75. Okay. Last thing we'll do is incorporate a handle into this partition part. So I'm going to select the face, use the sketch and extrude tools, so sketch, uh, create, come down to slot and use the first uh, center to center slot tool. I will left click, come across, left click, and then come up, left click again. Escape on the keyboard to get out of the slot tool. Now it's a D on the keyboard to start dimensioning this. I'll start with the radius dimension, 0.5. I'll give this a five inch length. Uh, we'll give it a, a dimension from the top edge of say 0.75. And then I would like this to be um, on center. If you notice now it can move side to side. I will use the line tool, which is in create or L on the keyboard. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna drag across this top edge until I find the the, the midpoint snap to it, and then come onto this part and find the midpoint. If you'll notice, it can still move side to side, so I need to further define this this edge. And I'm gonna use the horizontal vertical constraint, and now it's fixed in place. We go ahead and change this to the construction line. I will finish sketch by selecting the check mark and then E on the keyboard, select the slot, extrude it through. And you'll notice when I cut through this, it automatically selects this cut operation as opposed to a join or a new body operation. Okay, so now we have, we have our tool tote. I'm ready to, to create um, a drawing sheet that I can use then to, into, to print out and bring into the shop as a fabrication aid. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna come down into this, uh, the workspaces tab, and I'm gonna select the drawing workspace uh, from design. And I wanna use um, eight and a half by 11. Select okay. And by default, the front view is chosen. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. If we wanna change the, the, or the first view that we see, uh, we can have any view we want in here, um, but I'm gonna stick with the front and the scale looks a bit small. So I'm gonna to come to this dot, dot, dot and select, I think a one fifth scale, be a bit more visible. I'll left click on the page to drop it in place and select okay. Um, now I'm gonna add a couple of views in here. So I'm gonna select my view by left clicking on it, come up to create and projected view or P on the keyboard. And I'm gonna drop in a top view. I'm gonna come over to the side, a side view, and we'll go ahead and put in an isometric view up top. I can either do uh, enter on the keyboard or select the green uh, check mark. That looks like it's slightly off the drawing page. I'm gonna move it. If you select these, um, you'll notice that this can only move up and down. It's tied to the, to the uh, primary view. Um, so move these up a little bit. And now uh, I'm gonna add some dimensions so that I can use these in the, in the, in the shop space. Uh, so it's either D on the keyboard or you have a, in the, tool, the toolbar up here, um, some very specific uh, dimension types. I'm gonna use the standard uh, D dimension and start adding uh, dimensions in here to be used in the shop. So as I'm going through, I'm just left clicking on the two elements, the, the two spans that I want to see. We'll do an overall here. We'll give us a dimension for the height of this box here, height of this here. And I just add the dimensions that I think I will be using to build this project. should be sufficient there. I'll go ahead and add a dimension there. Um, yeah, so at this point, we're ready to print this out. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And when you're ready to print, you can use this ex uh, export to PDF and then print as PDF. Um, we'll take a look at making changes to our overall box or adding elements to it and see and see how that works. So I've saved my drawing. I'm going to go back to the, the model space, which is this upper left hand uh, tool tote. And we'll make we'll make a couple of changes. Um, if I navigate back in my timeline and if I double click on all of these elements, are the elements we use to create this box. 
So if I double click on any of them, I can make changes to them. So if, if I want the interior of the box to be say five inches, you can see that it increased the, 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 the bo interior box height, but it didn't increase it you know, in the way that I would like. So it, it gave this little offset toggle. Um, to find out which of these operations needs to be modified, I can use this um, timeline toggle and toggle it back. And I'm gonna go all the way back to this first extrude, which looks um, appropriate. And I will then look at the move. So it's clear that in the move operation, that's where we're losing our reference point. So I'm gonna double click on the move and I'm going to just deselect the selections and reselect them. And use the rotate tab. So just redo this minus 30. I will drag the timeline back across, double click, repeat. Minus 30. And you can see that I forgot to select uh, this other, this alternate edge. So I'm going to use control. I double clicked on the move command and select the face. And I'm going to do the same here. So it was this, this operation. You also notice when I hover over the operation, it kind of shows what was performed. If I select the face, it gives me three slash marks on what created that, that operation as well. So I'm gonna double click, control and select the other face. I'll drag the timeline back, see how it updated. Um, I would prefer that this round over, you know, be a full, <clears throat> a full round over and drag these back across. So now our box is, has been modified and updated. I'm gonna save this. And this will create version three. So if, if I ever wanna go back to the previous version, um, I can do this dropdown, select version two and open that and I'll have, I'll have the version of the toolbox I had created then. Um, so the last thing we'll look at is how this affects the drawing sheet. So I'm going to open the drawing file. And you'll notice that we get this uh, exclamation mark icon. That means something has changed to the model. And this drawing is out of date. So I'm going to select this by left clicking on it. And it brings it back up to date. And it's incorporated this new 5-inch uh, interior box height along with the increased radius. I'm going to save this. And that concludes our toolbox tutorial.